What's up you guys, so I'm here with a new video today and I'm here to finally bring you guys an updated Domain Monarch deck profile. I've been meaning to do this for a while, I was only missing a couple cards, shout out to my boy Tommy, he hooked me up with the last Vanity Fiend I needed. I've had two Vanity Fiend forever, I just never had a third. Card is super intricate in this deck. Uh, the reason I'm profiling this deck in this format is because number one, it is a budget deck. You do not, I repeat, do not need an extra deck for this deck, number one. Number two, this deck is dirt cheap, there is like nothing in this deck I can think of that's even expensive. You just have to build a side deck and it's also the fact that people forget domain of the true monarchs is still a card it is a card that basically says you cannot access your extra deck which means a lot of decks this format cannot play i'm not going to waste any time though i'm going to get into the list uh i've seen a player his name is matthew herrera he has taught multiple regionals with the deck and i got my list exactly from him i'm not gonna you know say that i came up with this list his theory is like pretty much spot on with everything i think a dom domain monarch deck should be it's on jobber's channel if you guys want to see it uh but yeah i'm gonna get into it real quick so very standard stuff. I'll explain stuff if anything seems out of out of place. But three Erebus, it has become your best monarch for the fact that Ether has gone to one. We'll throw the Ether in there too. These are of course your main monarchs. You know, Eth, uh, Erebus has you know non-targeting removal, really really good. Spinning stuff back to the deck is great. And Ether, when you get it off, it's it's amazing because you get two monarchs for the cost of one. So I really like these cards. Uh, very standard in the monarch deck. Uh, the change is that there are two now two Mega Thestalos. This is probably one of the best cards in the deck for the fact that. It's basically a confiscation. You look at your opponent's hand, take away a problematic card. They get burned for it if it's a monster. Opening this with Domain is really strong. Your opponent starts with one last card. And with Domain up, most of the time they can't play. Uh, Metal Foes and a lot of decks like that have a really hard time if they can't access their extra deck. So card's just really, really solid. And then we play three Kuraz. Uh, that rounds out all the Monarchs. You play three Kuraz like you did last uh, last time Domain was a deck. Because you don't want to brick. This card helps you unbreak. It helps you draw cards. helps you get problematic cards off the field. It's just a really solid monarch in general so um, yeah that's the monarch lineup um, very very standard monarch lineup I wouldn't really change anything I think it was perfect and then the all-star of the deck is the three vanities fiend again shout out to my boy Tommy for hooking me up with the third vanities fiend this card literally says I win the game I'm not even joking you guys a vanities fiend with a domain and a march of the monarchs is broken like it's literally just broken because yeah they can out it with cards like I guess book of eclipse is one of the main outs but not many decks main that card the ability to just put a monster on the board that says you can't special summon is just crazy to me. Domain locks out the extra deck, and Vanity's Fiend says you can't special summon in general. So your your way around Domain would be to try to special cards that are not from the extra deck to play around Domain. But with Vanity's Fiend, you can't do that at all. This card is amazing. If this card only had a thousand defense, this card would be broken because it would work with tenacity. But beggars can't be choosers. This is definitely just an amazing card, though you have to play three in this deck, uh, this format. So Vanity's Fiend, all-star of the deck, definitely. On to the Squires, we play a lot of them. Three Idea, three Eidos, three Mithra. Now, when I first saw this uh, in the in the deck profile, I wondered, okay, why is he maxing out on Squires? You know, what is the benefit for that? I've always liked Mithra. I've been a huge fan of Mithra over, believe it or not, over Idea and Eidos. Mithra just gets you that extra tribute summon, really, really solid card. Putting a token on your opponent's side of the board, it was really relevant when Burning Abyss were the best deck, just because it would screw up all their Burning Abyss plays. But he explained that the problem with this deck that it had, even when it had Pantheons and all that, is that you needed to get tribute fodder. You could open with a handful of tribute monsters, but without a way to get them on the board, it was useless. Idea in the Eidos is still a great play. No deck is really maining Valor outside of Blue Eyes because they can search it with Sage. Mithra is just an amazing card because, like I said, you get an additional tribute summon and the ability to banish to get idea back is great. Recycling idea is amazing. When idea, you know, being able to add back your pantheisms, add back your stormforth, add back your one ups in this deck is just really important. So we do max out on the um, squires. And you may think that's really bad, but if you look at our ratios, we have nine uh, squires, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, we have twelve tribute monsters, so we should be able to open hands of squire plus tribute monster the majority of the time. So that's the reason for all that. You guys know what these cards do. Um, that's it for the monsters. We don't play cards like Maxi or anything. We're just trying to go first with the deck and set up our domain lock. On to the spells, the best spell in the deck, three domain. It says you can't summon from the extra deck. We don't have an extra deck, so it's broken. Uh, it really locks down a lot of decks, this format. Uh, people just are sleeping on it, so thought I'd definitely bring it to the light. And of course, all the standard stuff, uh, three tenacity, three return, you know, all just standard stuff uh, that you need for monarchs. Then for the other uh, one-ups, we have a lot. Of, we have one Pantheism, still the best draw card, probably in the, one of the best draw cards in the game. One Stormforth, one March. March and Vanity's Fiend is the dream. 
They really can't play when you got that on the field. Like uh, he said in his deck profile, one of the only outs is Book of Eclipse. So if they're not maining it, you got him game one with the March. Searchable by Tenacity. Or searchable, yeah, searchable by um, Tenacity. Searchable by Pantheism. This card is just really solid. Uh, and then more more uh, support cards. That's for like all the Monarch cards. We have one for one. Brings out Idea. Really good card. One Rota to search the Idea. So you basically are playing four. One Foolish because it works with all the cards in the deck. Iarbis's add back effect is still really important. A uh, one up start to keep the deck consistent. That's it for the spells. And lastly, we end with three Prime Monarchs. So the reason we're not playing any other uh, Monarch traps, I guess you would say, like, uh, Escalation is because they don't allow us to play first. They are very good in theory. However, this deck has already suffered with bricking enough. You know, even when it is in its prime, the deck really uh, struggled with bricking, and we are just focusing on getting our tribute summons off. Whatever we can do to get a turn one Vanity Sphine, or get a couple, uh, you know, get a Mithra, get an Erebus, get a Thessalos, take two cards out of their hand, whatever we can do to control the games from turn one, that's what we're trying to do. So yeah, so that is the deck, you guys. It is 40 cards, there's no extra deck. Side deck is open to interpretation, whatever you guys want to make. Um, but as you guys can see, this is a very, very budget deck. Like, nothing in here costs, like, anything. Like, all these cards are commons. Like, basically, you know, you could just ask for these cards like i'm not even joking i don't think any of these cards are worth anything um unless you're like maxing out on the deck you know these come super this comes super i don't do that so as you guys can see it's a very very straightforward deck i really like it i really suggest anyone that is coming back into the game and doesn't have access to you know like metal foes or or you know any of the main decks right now to definitely give this deck a try i actually really like it i tested it out a little bit i played against blue eyes it was basically an auto win you get a turn one vanity's fiend it's just game it's just a really really fun deck to play and i think you guys should definitely look into it this might be the only card that might be worth a little bit but it's definitely not much but uh, yeah let me know what you guys think if you guys liked it uh, like i said i got the deck profile from uh, jobber's channel i'll have a link down below i really like the deck i feel it's a really good budget uh deck this format it's also basically i never thought i'd say a monarch used to always be meta but i would call them an anti-meta Cho choice now because of Domain and Vanity's Fiend. I feel those two cards are intricate to just stopping a majority of the meta. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button. If you have any suggestions for the deck, please leave them below. If you want to see an extra deck build, I can bring that to you guys. I do have the Brilliant Fusions and all that. If you feel that that would be the better build, personally, I feel Domain is better only for the fact that it says the opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. So before you suggest that, think about that. Domain literally locks them out of their extra deck and you can play. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.